Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Ripple has dropped an absolute bomb in their most recent legal filing, and I don't say that to generate excitement. Well, not solely. I mean, it, it is exciting, uh, but it's true. Like, <laughs> Ripple has, uh, has highlighted uh, an email from the SEC from October of 2020 last year that stated that XRP, very clearly, XRP is not a security <clears throat> because... No determination has been made. And I'm going to share with you that, that email. And it was sent to a, a third party, a, a market participant, a retail speculator, no less. Well, what in the ever-loving hell is that? So apparently, uh, now the, the, the alleged claim, of course, Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, they all did bad stuff with XRP selling it uh, for, uh, for a better part of a decade. And they knew it, but um, that, that's a claim. But the SEC here, they themselves are stating that there's no determination. Isn't that kind of an important piece of evidence? And so it actually comes from uh, something that was shared on, on social media. I actually highlighted this probably over half a year ago. But uh, it's exciting to see it cited in Ripple's most recent legal filing here. And funny enough, in a footnote, no less. Which, by the way, is extra funny. You'll see as I go through this video for uh, another reason. But... Um, I do want to be clear at the outset that I don't have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos, but it's just uh, something I do as a fun hobby, that's all. And so I'm going to go through this most recent legal filing in a moment. It's seven pages. I read the whole thing and I printed it up. Hear that? That's some dead trees coming through right there in the mic. And I highlighted the parts that I found the most interesting and pertinent. But first, I want to uh, get to like the meatiest part of this, if I may. I think you appreciate that, right? Just getting straight to the meat of the damn thing before going for it. Not make you wait for, towards the end of this latest Moon Lambo hot jam to get all the hot deets. Uh, so he here is the tweet in question. Um, and, uh, and Jeremy Hogan, attorney Jeremy Hogan, of course, runs the channel Legal Briefs. Um, he, he retweeted this today, like about an hour ago, actually. And, and what was the original tweet? Uh, it was from a, a gentleman named Frank. And he tagged Ripple, he tagged the SEC, he tagged SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce, and wrote the following. And this is on, by the way, this is on December 24th, 2020. That's two days after the SEC filed their initial legal complaint against Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, two days after. And so here is a retail speculator named Frank who wrote the following. I have bought XRP early 2018 and wasn't sure if I bought a security because there was no decision yet. So I asked the SEC here uh, the answer to my concerns. Are they lying to me with four question marks? And then he tags Brad Garlinghouse, he tagged Brian Brooks, and I uh, tagged uh, another XRP community member. And here's the screen grab. I'll just pull it up here full screen. And so this is the email that Frank received from the SEC on October 14th, 2020. And folks, it does not get more clear than this. Thank you for uh, thank you for recent email. That seems like a broken sentence. Thank you for recent email to the US Securities and Exchange Commission. We appreciate the opportunity to review your additional concerns about Ripple XRP cryptocurrency. Please be advised the SEC has not issued a determination on whether the cryptocurrency XRP is a security. Whether a cryptocurrency is considered a security will depend on the characteristics and use of the cryptocurrency. As we have suggested, you may want to review Chairman Jay Clayton's statement um, regarding cryptocurrencies and initial coin offerings, and then they share a link there. And so again, it does, it does not get more clear. This is from the SEC. And the person that sent this, their title is in Investor Assistance Specialist. Again, they wrote, Please be advised the SEC has not issued a determination on whether the cryptocurrency XRP is a security. They don't even know. Now, mind you, this is, this is just a couple months before this lawsuit was brought forth. And so Jeremy Hogan retweeted that and wrote the following. Uh, give a follow or like or just say thanks to Frank. His tweet was cited in Ripple's latest brief and the email from the SEC states, quote, 
the SEC has not issued a determination on whether XRP is a security. That email was October 14th, 2020, two months before the lawsuit. Boom. And in fact, I'll show you right here on the screen, and this is why it's kind of interesting. This is like my favorite part of this, this brief. And here I can find it for you. I'll just highlight it. Um, yeah, here you go. That, that's it right there. Um, yeah, so notably, uh, Mr. Hinman's testimony is refuted by the SEC's own communications to the public as late as October 2020 that the SEC had made no determination as to the XRP status as to XRP status, and then that shares a link right there. There it is, and it's just, it's funny, it's in a freaking footnote. <laughs> but hey, it's in there. It's, you know, the point is that it is indeed in there. Um, and so uh, then somebody named XRP Vladdy responded to Jeremy Hogan and wrote, Wow, how big does this seem to you? And Jeremy Hogan wrote the following. It's the latest thing I've seen from the SEC stating that XRP security status is undetermined. And two months before the lawsuit... That just starts to look bad for the SEC. I think it's very important. Ah, yes, indeed, no kidding there. Um, now, technically, and I thought I'd just cite this for the hell of it, technically, the tweet that was cited in the footnote was a different tweet than the one that Jeremy Hogan shared, but it shared the same screen grab. And so the actual one that was cited in the footnote was actually uh, on February 23rd, 2021, in response to... A, a tweet from a, a Ripple employee, Stuart Alderody, uh, who is a general counsel at Ripple. Th over 35 years of legal experience with legal... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I read that wrong. Over 35 years of, of legal experience with expertise in banking, regulatory affairs, and complex litigation. That's what it says on his Twitter profile. And so he wrote a tweet that stated the following. Uh, this is Stuart Alderati now, February 23rd. The law requires that persons of ordinary intelligence be given fair notice of what's prohibited. That's why it's important... We learned that sophisticated parties, after engaging with the SEC, concluded that transacting in XRP wasn't prohibited, but in fact permitted. And so, uh, what it's talking about right there, it's the uh, someone we found out, uh, you know, about half a year ago, that there was a, a, certainly at least one big exchange in the United States that, after engaging with the SEC, decided to list XRP. So they came to the conclusion that it was absolutely perfectly safe. And so that's where Frank responded, Hi, Stuart. I mailed the SEC uh, different times last year, and here is the mail in, uh, in October, I think. And so it's the same screen grab right there. And then um, John Deaton wrote the following. Um, in XRP Holder's motion to intervene, we use Frank's email as one of our exhibits. Great piece of evidence. And by the way, I'll mention this now, too. Uh, John Deaton's motion to intervene was uh, shared in this most recent legal filing as well, and John Deaton tweeted out the filing about that. Um, XRP Holders' motion to intervene is being cited again. This proves XRP Holders are in this fight, even if we are not yet in the ring. Uh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why I said so many times. If, if I had to be a lawyer on one of these sides and... Uh, like my life depended on winning, I would much rather be on the side of Ripple than the side of the SEC. I just if these if these asshats don't settle, like what like do do, do you want to feel the pain? Like I just don't understand. Um, and then there was this tweet from uh, from from Bank XRP who shared a screen grab, and um, and it was uh, what forum was this? I, I I don't know what forum was this like Reddit or XRP chat? I I don't know. Um, but but anyway, so this is a um, this is a comment in some sort of forum from uh, from Arthur Brito, who's who's actually one of the creators of XRP and the XRP Ledger. In fact, no, he's actually the creator. So technically, I, if I'm not mistaken, he's the one that actually coded the 100 billion XRP into existence. I'm about 100% sure he's the actual one of the out of the three people that made XRP and the XRP Ledger. I believe he's the one that actually coded it. If I'm not mistaken, but anyway. You can see it was highlighted here by Bank XRP. Ripple Labs doesn't want to provide financial advice or give anyone false expectations for the value of XRP. As such, you should not expect any guidance from Ripple Labs on these topics, especially as Ripple Labs does not control the value of XRP. Yeah, and so, and by the way, that, that comment was from September 30th, 2015. It doesn't get more clear, uh, Ripple absolutely under no illusion that they can control the price of xrp uh, and then jeremy hogan retweeted that and wrote the following uh, this is the type of communication that the sec is hopefully finding in the slack messages and other discovery from ripple 
Here, Mr. Brito makes clear Ripple does not try to influence XRP price. This suggests Ripple execs got good legal advice back in the day. Um, and then there was this also. So this leads to the part where I'm about to jump into uh, what I highlighted and found most interesting in this, this legal filing. And so uh, attorney James K. Filing on Twitter shared this. And uh, Jeremy Hogan re responded with the following. Attorney Jeremy Hogan wrote, Matt Solomon. Matt Solomon, of course, is one of uh, Ripple's attorneys. He wrote, Matt Solomon, on fire and great minds think alike. Uh, hitting on the main points I talked about in my video that the SEC is attempting to relitigate the privilege issue and the fact that the SEC backs off the privilege argument on 40 documents uh, doesn't mean, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, documents means that a judge review is needed. Bam. And, uh, and so let's, let's go ahead and dive into that now. Um, and so, again, this is to, to, to Judge Netburn. Uh, I think I'll start yeah, this part right here. Um, I delve further. Why doesn't my arrow key work? I don't know why that's not. Work. Come on, technology. There we go. That's the part. Um, at issue here is the propriety of the SEC's blanket invocation of the deliberative process privilege (DPP). Uh, and so, so that has to do with the deliber deliberative process, and um, to, to what degree the SEC basically, as a government entity, can can claim, hey. Uh, this is super duper secret information. I'm just super layman's terms right there, but the degree to which they can say, nope, this is absolutely confidential. Uh, nobody else can see this information. And so that's what the Ripple's saying, of course, that's what's at issue here. And then they continue. Yet the SEC spends the bulk of its opposition relitigating the relevance of materials that the court has already found to be relevant and compelled to be produced. The SEC also continues to fight the legal standards that the court has already recognized apply to the fair notice defense raised by Ripple and to the SEC's aiding and abetting claims against the individual defendants. Let me pause right there. The, the, the fair notice defense, I'm assuming the vast majority of you are familiar with it at this point, but it's this idea that Ripple, uh, of course, from their perspective, and I believe it to be true, they did not have fair notice from the SEC that what they were doing with XRP, in particular selling it, there's no indication that what they were doing was wrong. There was no specific guidance. If you look at what was happening in the market, there was all sorts of confusion. And so if Ripple did not have fair notice that what they were doing was wrong from a legal perspective, if that's what the court finds, this is all over. This all goes away, Ripple wins, that's it. That's how big of a deal this is. Which is why when you see in October of 2020, two months before the suit was brought, that, uh, that the SEC itself is, is acknowledging that the SEC hasn't made a determination about XRP, that's pretty damning. That's pretty rough to get around. Good luck, SEC. You're going to need it. And then, uh, anyway, then the, the uh, Ripple attorney continues here. Uh, what the... Wait, uh, did I get too far ahead? I may have lost my spot. The SEC also continues to fight... I mean, sorry if I'm rereading the same part. It's best to just do this than try and jump in too far ahead. The SEC also continues to fight the legal standards... <laughs> excuse me. Legal standards that the court has already recognized apply to the fair notice defense raised by Ripple and to the SEC's aiding and abetting claims against the individual defendants. What the SEC does not, because it cannot, defend is its across-the-board assertion of the DPP. Instead, the SEC asks the court to trust it, order production of nothing, and look at nothing, notwithstanding the SEC's admission buried in a footnote, that's, <laughs> that's what I was referencing earlier, that it improperly designated 40 documents as protected by the DPP when the privilege does not apply. And so th what they're stating there, obviously, is that this uh, assertion of, of privilege, it's being applied to everything across the board, and it's so grossly, like, the well, the attempt um, is, is so gross to just over-apply this standard that it, well, it should be apparent, certainly. And then they go on to cite here that last part where they're citing is something else interesting in a footnote. The SEC actually acknowledged that they made a mistake they did they acknowledged that they made a mistake and designated 40 documents as protected by uh, the dpp when that privilege does not apply but everything else of course everything else and that was in a footnote of course now i'm not surprised to hear that but that's why it's so funny that's in the footnote and then the the bomb the, like the little bombshell here of uh you know that that let well, it was a screen grab, but the email sent to that guy, Frank, on, t on Twitter, uh, uh, he shared that. 
um, showing that even the SEC was not clear and what the hell was going on. It's just funny they're both in the footnote, that's all. But anyway, moving on. The SEC spends nearly three full pages of its opposition on its already failed protestations that internal considerations of whether Bitcoin, Ether, and XRP are securities is not relevant, but the court already found this discovery is relevant to the court's eventual analysis with respect to the Howey factors. And so XRP is or isn't you know, like, re regardless of what Ripple execs thought, it, it either, it, like, whatever the Ripple executives thought, it's it's irrelevant because either XRP is or is not a security. Or, or in, the, in this case, the way that Ripple sold it was or was not sold as a security. So it's irrelevant uh, to, to what the, was going on in the minds of the individuals. It's more, it's, it's, it's what happened in reality. That's what the standard is here. And then on another page, this page, let's just jump down to page three here. Uh, yes, here we go. The SEC's blanket invocation of DPP is in any event contrary to established precedent. Uh, the DPP is not absolute. It is qualified by policy considerations that reflect a balancing of factors. And so to read the SEC's opposition is to believe that public policy always favors secrecy in government policymaking. The opposite is true. Yeah, exactly. And so the SEC, hasn't it felt like that as, a, as we've been like, seeing all of this unfold before our very eyes and ears? That the, the SEC just is like, no, no, everything we do, super secret, super secret here, SEC, like, that's what they're claiming here. And it'll make no damn since the moon Lambo. And so the SEC is basically seeing if the court will let them get away with hiding everything. That, that's it. That's, that's pretty much it. Uh, next page, page four. Uh, yes, here we go. I love this. The oh, more Hinman stuff. Former Director Hinman, formerly with the SEC. Uh, so, of course, this is the gentleman, use that term loosely there, who, uh, who gave this speech in summer of 2018 stating that Ethereum is not a security. Got the golden pass from the SEC and, and William Hinman. So, Mr. Hinman admitted that prior to him joining the SEC in 2017... But years into the alleged unregistered securities offering by Ripple, the application of the federal securities laws to digital assets was, quote, new for everyone, end quote. And, quote, no one knew a whole lot, end quote. That's, that's Hinman there, guys. Further, he further admitted that he could not recall any specific work product generated at the time he joined the SEC relating to federal securities laws in Bitcoin, Ether, or XRP, and did not, quote, think people had completely thought through all the ways the securities laws may apply to that activity, end quote. Hmm, well, how about that? This testimony, the documents produced, and potentially the documents that should be produced in discovery as a result of defendant's motion, fatally undermine the SEC's allegations that the individual defendants acted recklessly in failing to recognize Ripple's sales of XRP as an unregistered securities offering, uh, as, uh, as at that time, securities law experts uh, of Mr. Hinman's stature, to say nothing of the full commission, had not reached that conclusion themselves, despite looking into the issue. Well, how about this? He again, had not reached that conclusion. And so Hinman is admitting legal clarity doesn't exist, which isn't what he was trying to do there. But that's what happened, which is hilarious. Oops a doodles, William Hinman. Uh, then there's page five. Uh, here we go. Uh, I'm in the right spot, right? Sorry, one second. Yeah, yeah, we good here. Okay. Um, most of the documents sought either reflect communications with third parties or are formal documents prepared and circulated at high levels within the SEC. Disclosure of such materials is unlikely to chill the give and take of the internal discussions among the SEC. What such communications will confirm, however, and listen up, I love this, is that the SEC was being told by market participants and others that its guidance regarding the application of the securities laws to digital assets was unclear at best and that the SEC and its senior staff were themselves grappling with whether and to what extent digital assets could and should be regulated as securities. 
All of this occurred during the same period when the SEC now alleges that the status of XRP under the securities laws was obvious, quote, obvious, to Mr. Garlinghouse and Mr. Larson right there. And so that's what they're afraid of. This is, this is the reason they don't want the internal documents to get out, because part of the internal documents, it's not just about what the SEC was saying. It's about what was being communicated to them. You know, because even if they have innocent responses that don't make them look bad, what makes them look bad is the fact that they're getting inundated with questions from all sorts of people saying, hey, there's not sufficient clarity here, damn it. Which <laughs> seems like a virtual certainty, don't you think? And then at the end, uh, the last thing I highlighted here is, um, and I may have mentioned this earlier anyway, sometimes I highlight things that are somewhat duplicative here. Um, although buried in a footnote, the SEC now admits that 40 documents, yeah, it's the same thing, previously withheld on DPP grounds, are not, in fact, subject to the privilege. And so there you go. That's the end of the document. So those are things that I found most fascinating about it. Why isn't this just, like, a, clearly a slam dunk to the point where the SEC is already thrown in the towel? What, what, is, what is going on here? <laughs> and in the meantime, all I can say is, like, this is why we cannot have nice things. This is why we cannot have nice things. So you let me know what you think below, but... Uh, yeah, they're basically a bunch of, you know, just an army of asshats over there at the SEC just marching along. Meh, 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 asshats marching. This is what it sounds like. Bunch of asshats. <sighs> good times, good times, everybody. I'll wrap up here. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo. <laughs>